We're going to create a website from scratch and give away Elementor Pro to everyone that watches this video. Welcome to the channel, my name's Lewis. Today what I'm gonna to show you is how to build a similar website to this and give you all the tools and knowledge on how to build it. So let's get started. Now the first thing you wanna do before you jump into anything like this is understand why I'm doing this. First and foremost, I was trying to learn how to build a website maybe a year and a half ago, an efficient one, something that is Google friendly. And ultimately all of the videos that I saw on YouTube are either four hours long, three hours long, two hours long, and they talk around the topics instead of getting to the point. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know and the most efficient way in order to build a website. The first thing you wanna do before you do anything is find out if you even need to build a new one. This is both for those that need to build a new one or are starting from scratch. I'm gonna show you every little step that you need to know. So let's jump into it right now. So the first thing you wanna do is jump into a website called GT Metric. It's very simple. Put in your website. This is one of my websites that I have running right now. It's going to analyze it. It's going to review it and tell you if it's good or not. If you're above 80, you're in a good spot. Don't worry about building a new website unless you want a new website. If you're below 85, 80, there's a problem. So as you can see, this website is on 9588. This means it's Google friendly. They like it. It means it's going to rank on Google if I want it to rank. Of course, there are other components to that. The point is from the foundation side of the website, it's very, very good. And this is all built on a platform called Cloudways, which I'm going to show you. There's a link to Cloudways below. Now, the reason I use Cloudways over Wix over Squarespace is it's much cheaper in the long run. I run about four different websites going all at one time. And instead of paying $19, $14, $10 for one website, or here we have $16, $25 for one website, I have everything on Cloudways, $10. And it's really, really fast, as you can see. So what I'm gonna show you is how to build all of it. We're gonna do it all together. So let's rock and roll. So if you don't have a domain, you want to jump into Google domains. A lot of people want you to go into like GoDaddy or any of those things. Don't do that. Go straight to the source, go to Daddy Google and buy the domain from them. So if you want a specific domain, go grab it, sign into your real account and then purchase the domain off your real account. It means it's safe. It's secure. You have everything in one spot. Don't go to GoDaddy. Don't go to cheap domains. Just get it here because in the long run, especially when you want to hook up Google Analytics and all those different things to your website, this is, you know, it's already done for you. Google authenticates everything for you. So it's perfect. Once you have the domain, the next thing you want to do is jump over to a website called cloudways.com. Start it for free. It's a 14 day free trial. Use my link below and also just sign up using your own Gmail. Keep everything in Gmail. Keep it all connected or whatever email you use. Try and keep everything in one central place so you don't get confused. Again, your domain's on Google. Cloudways is on Google. Wix doesn't need to exist anymore and Squarespace doesn't need to exist. And that is the metrics over there. So now once you're in Google domain and you've purchased your domain, this is exactly what it looks like. So now you can see I have a few different businesses that are running. Petri Ventures, the one that you just saw. And what today, what we're going to build is rebuild is PetriDigital.com. So this is exactly what Petri Digital looks like today on our cloud-based server. I'm going to now show you what it looked like before this. It's a completely different animal. It works. And of course, this connects to Cloudways, this connects to your Google, this connects to everything. So let's jump into showing you how this is accomplished. PetriDigital.com is built on another platform called Converti. I'll have a link to that in the description below as well. Converti is based basically my little funnel builder. And I built this a long time ago. It doesn't look that good to me, but otherwise we're gonna rebuild it with the tools that I'm gonna show you. We're gonna show you Elementor. We're gonna show you how to build a website from scratch. Now, before I take you there, I just wanna show you really quickly. There's only servers and applications. Don't worry about team projects or anything else. They're really just trying to confuse you with all that nonsense. It's only servers and applications. That's all you need to care about. The server is the server. And then the application is the actual WordPress, whatever you want on here, that's on it. So we're gonna create a server right now with you. In this case, we're not going to create a WooCommerce website. You can create an e-commerce store if you want to. You can do it with this one as well. So it doesn't matter. For now, we're just going to build a standalone website for you. So version 5.4.2, that's fine. We're going to update it later. And then what you want to do is you want to just call it a name. So I'm just going to call it Creator Lewis, Creator Lewis, and it's going to be on a project called Petri Ventures. Again, you can create a project whenever you want. Then what you want to do is actually have a look at Voltaire. Voltaire is more than good enough for what you want to 
achieve, especially when you're low. And when you're very high and you're very popular, then you can look at increasing these things, but you don't really need to do that unless you're get, getting hundreds of thousands of views and therefore $20 a month is nothing to you, to be fair with you. Do not, by any means, do not go for AWS or Google Cloud to get done. So stick with Voltaire, pay 10 bucks a month and get as many websites as you really want. Around five, six, seven is more than enough instead of paying Wix's, you know, $20 for one website per month. So trust me on that, that's a big deal. Now, server size, that's fine. One gigabyte is more than enough. You don't need any more than that, to be fair. And then the server location. Now this is relative to your business. So I actually do a lot of business in Sydney, Australia, but also in America as well. I'm based in Sydney. So what I did was say, okay, well, if I look at the server lines in the world, I would actually rather be in LA because there is a direct link between LA and Sydney with respect to the servers and also LA and having a server in LA connects me with Canada and of course, America. So I went and chose Los Angeles. If you're in Europe, you know, pick a EU. London is a pretty big one as well. Great hub, um, especially London if you're dealing with Europe and America. Really, really good. Also, New York is another great one if you're dealing with Europe and America. Those lines, which are which are fine. But otherwise, for now, you know, you can. I'll just pick Sydney, Asia Pacific for now. So once you have your server, the first thing you want to do is actually go into settings and packages. The reason you want to do that is because you want to update your PHP. It's actually a thing. It's very important. At this point in time, you want to go into packages and then update these things individually. So you want to update PHP and MySQL. This is a big deal. It makes your website much faster once you do that. So in this case, you can see PHP 7.4 at this point in time, of course, update it to your latest one. And then MySQL, you can update that as well if you want to go down that route as well. So I highly recommend that you update this. Now leave about 30, 40 minutes in order for it to do this. It takes a bit of time, but it's well worth it. It speeds up your website quite substantially. That is the only thing you need to do from the server perspective. Then once that's done, you want to go into applications. Here are all the applications that I have in my server, otherwise known as Petri Ventures. I have the online creator and Institute there. I have the online education insider. I have one of my shops and of course, Petri Ventures. You've already seen Petri Ventures. So what I want to do now is actually rebuild this website because I don't like the look of this website at all because I know how to build websites properly now and quickly. So what we're going to do is rebuild Petri Digital, which is my agency. So all I want to do is click on add application. We're going to call it, of course, on the server that we've just created together. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a version, a standard version of WordPress. I'm going to call it Petri Digital. It's going to be in my project that is Petri Ventures. Again, don't worry too much about projects. It's just where they are, um, especially if you're hosting multiple websites. It's on my server, which is great. So now what's happening is you can see adding application. So again, I'm on the $10 plan. I now have five different websites on this one plan. If I was to do this on Wix or Squarespace, it would cost me literally 150 bucks in order to pull this off. So trust me when I say this, go down this route. The other cool benefit of this is if you know this stuff, the whole server piece, it means you're opening up your world of knowledge in general. So if you know how to do this for a company, your value inherently goes up. And we're not going to wait through this like all the other YouTubers do. So we're going to skip to this once it's done. And as you can see, it's been complete. Petri Digital has been installed. All I need to do is click on applications. Remember $10 a month, guys. And there it is right there. So I'm running one, two, three, four, five websites for this, which is quite impressive for $10 a month. Good luck to compete against that Wix. So let me take you through this interface first, and then I'll take you through the others. So the first thing you want to do is, and a consequence of getting Voltaire, it gives you a whole bunch of bot, bot protection. So you're not going to get a lot of spam. You're not going to get anything like that. Then what you want to do is you actually want to look at all this interface for a bit. So the first thing you want to look at is actually your SSL certificate. Now, what exactly is that? So your SSL certificate is once you in, insert your domain into the website. So right now the website actually looks like this. Let me show you. Now this website's gonna have a completely different URL because of this, but hey, that's it. And then you have your user, and then you have your password. And this is the first time you're using WordPress. Now, the first thing you want to do when you use WordPress is a few things. Now, what I suggest you do is you want to make it as crystal clean as possible. As you can see, this is literally the first time I'm logging into this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually update WordPress. Always update WordPress first. So let's do that together right now. So I've clicked on that. 
and now I'm pressing update now. So this is gonna update me to the latest version of WordPress. I don't know if you recall before it said install WordPress 5.4 point whatever it was, this is fixing that and relieving that immediately. So now I'm on the latest version of WordPress, which is great. It's gonna give it speed. It's gonna give it better for your searches and all that security. It's helping your website out a lot. The first thing you wanna do is actually go right into settings. Now, a lot of people don't even do this at all. And then what you wanna do is you wanna leave this off. You wanna leave that off as you want to just look at this and make sure all your, so where are you based? What's your time zone? Add all those things. I personally don't even care for that stuff, but hey, that's fine. So writing, this is fine. You don't even have to worry about. Once you go into settings is you wanna click on permalinks. Now permalinks is pretty critical. The reason that is critical is because look at what happens to your link once it's default WordPress. You never actually wanna do that. It's really bad for SEO as well. So what you wanna do is just have the website and the post name or website and the extension. Not all this other crazy stuff that was just there. It looked like this before, right? You don't wanna do that. So just click on post name, then go to custom structure again and or just click on post name. That, that should be completely fine. Do not go any of those routes. Uh, it will, you know, Google doesn't like that at all. So custom structure, that's fine. Save changes. Privacy, you know, if you have a privacy policy page, that's fine. Breeze, now Breeze is something that you get for free as part of Voltaire, and this allows you to actually clear the cache. You wanna clear your cache, you know, as much as possible. So in this case is move this from 1440, which represents one day, it clears it one day, and just change that to 720 basically turning it in half. Every 12 hours, it's gonna clear the cache automatically. The next thing you wanna do is jump into themes. Now, you're gonna see a lot of themes here, and a lot of people don't tell you this, unfortunately, but you should do it. The first thing you wanna do is actually add a new theme. You wanna click on hello. You can see that, well, first, actually, I should show you this. You should see, you can see that all these other themes are very loaded with stuff on. This one looks okay to me. This, like, it's just a whole bunch of junk in here, and you don't want to be building a website with these types of themes, to be fair with you. You want your theme to be very, very clean because you're going to be building the website at the end of the day. What you want to do is type in hello. A lot of others like to go with Astra and other webs and other themes. Like, I'll just show you Astra, for example. So Astra is another popular theme, but you need to pay for all the additional stuff with Astra. It comes with a lot of great things, but don't even bother with it, to be honest. Just go and download Hello. And Hello is built on a platform called Elementor, which I have a link to in the description below. So what I'm gonna do immediately is activate it. Don't worry about viewing your website at this point. Now, this is a big deal what I'm about to show you. What you wanna do is click on all your other themes. So I'm in appearance, themes. I've just activated this theme and you'll see up here that you, you know, hello, thank you for installing Elementor, which is great. But what you want to do before you do any of that is you actually want to go and delete these other themes. This theme is never going to die on you. It never will because it's, it's run by one of the best brands, in my opinion, in the world. And I'll have a link to them in the description below. The point is you want to go and delete all these other themes that were on here. As you can see, I'm doing it right now. Now I only have the Hello Elemental theme in here. The reason that is, is because we're cleaning out that server. We're reducing the amount of workload that this thing needs to load up or even has on its files. Think of your website like a folder. So here's like my random downloads folder, right? If you remove themes, it's like removing these folders and making it clean. So whenever the internet wants to access your folder, then you're just cleaning all that crap out. Once you've cleaned out all your themes, you wanna click on Install Elemental. So now what I want to do is go click on plugins and then you'll see elemental settings here. Now, there are a few things that you can do at this point in time. You can continue using the free version. Alternatively, you can also like this video, subscribe, and I'll give you a pro version. I have a thousand copies of the pro version. So the first thousand people that do all this, I'll give it to you. And if more of you guys want it, I'll give you elemental pro for free under my thousand licenses, which I pay on a yearly basis. And it's only for subscribers. And again, if I run out of these thousand codes, I will just invest again and continue to you know give you guys give back to my community and all you need to do is subscribe to my channel like the video comment below saying you know you like this also go to my facebook group and join that so you can actually tell me that you're invested in it otherwise i'm not going to know through the facebook group right i need you to like the video subscribe to the channel comment below and also join the facebook group and then tell me that you've done all those things on a personal note you're getting elemental for free if you do the, all those things again like follow comment and then join the facebook group and it's all yours just 
send me a direct DM. You know who I am. If you're a business, I would recommend you go off and buy this yourself. Use it as a business expense. I have a link to Elementor below. Use my link. It helps me out a bit as well. And it also helps me pay for what I'm giving everyone else. So if you're a business, click my link below for Elementor. It's completely tax deductible. So now I'm in Elementor. You can see my account, my name. If I scroll down any further, you're going to see everything, which I don't want you to see everything. The point is, then you're going to see download plugin, download it there. And then what you want to do is go back to Elementor. Once you're back at Elementor, you're going to see plugins, add new. And then what you want to do is click upload plugin. And then what you want to do is choose file, find it wherever it was, and then install now. And what that's going to do is actually install and activate the pro version, Elementor Pro. And then eventually what you're going to see is two versions of Elementor. And then once you do that, you want to activate and connect. So now you can see it no longer says go pro. Then you want to click on connect and activate up here. And then what you're going to see is active status and it's all activated and it's all fine and it's all good and dandy. And now you have all the advanced features, everything in Elementor. And that's Elementor completely installed on your WordPress server. You can see the website isn't still Petra Digital at this point in time. It's still WordPress and a crazy looking website, which no one's ever going to know. And this website's not going to be live, by the way, because it's going to be Petra Digital by the end of this. Now I want you to go back into plugins and install a few more different plugins for us. This is going to make your life much easier, especially when you want to add things. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add something called header footer code manager. Just add it. You'll use it later. Trust me on this, especially when you do want to figure out like integrations and stuff. It'll be there for your future. Trust me. The next one you want to actually add as well is another tool called short pixel. I have a link to short pixel as well in the description below. What this is going to do is optimize your images. The reason you want to optimize images. Once that's done, you want to go into settings and click on discussion. Now, the reason you want to do this is because you want to go into Gravatar. You want to actually set up your logo, your name as a Gravatar account. Gravatar is owned by WordPress themselves. And then what you want to do is actually go and create a Gravatar account and use your actual image. Now, if I click on Gravatar logo and I have my my face attached to it, you're going to see immediately my logo shows up on the top right of the screen because it's connected to all of my WordPress accounts. If you set up a Gravatar logo, all your profile images will be there and it'll sync. So set up a Gravatar account that's completely free and do that. And as a quick side note, what you want to do once you have short pixel, and again, I have the link in the description, I highly recommend you get this. It's going to make your life much easier Then what you want to do. Once you're in the general tab, you want to click on lossless. Do not click on lossy. Lossy will completely destroy the, your images and make them look really bad. Lossless will optimize your images just enough so it doesn't destroy the image. So the resulting image is pixel identical with the original one. However, it is optimized than compressed, which is exactly what Google wants. So there is a small tip. Click on lossless and then click on save changes. The next thing you want to do is really have a foundation for your website. Now, because I'm rebuilding my old Petri Digital website, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. The first thing I do is I have my Petri Digital home, which has already been created. The next one I would probably create free website audit. I'll create a dedicated page for that. Remember, you need to set your, your page attribution. So that's fine. And then I'm going to add a few more. So I'm going to go ahead and add these and I'll see you soon. So I've gone ahead and I've created draft copies of all of my different pages that I'm going to have on the website. And then now what I'm going to do is actually scrap all the other ones. So I'm going to scrap the sample page. I'm going to scrap the privacy policy. I'm going to create a new one later. And now I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different pages on my website just to keep it clean and simple. Now, the first thing you want to do once you have a website is create your header and footer. The reason you want to create your header and footer is one, because they're the most painful and two, they help form the structure of your actual website. So let's do that right now. So the first thing you want to do is you're probably in the dashboard right now. You want to click on templates. Then you want to click on theme builder. The reason you want to click on theme builder is because this is going to guide you now. 
and even Elementor guides you through how to build this. You have your header, you have your footer, and you have all the other stuff as well. So now what I'm going to do is click on footer because I think footer is the easiest one to do. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a footer, and I'm, I'm then I'm going to call it footer. And another thing you can do is add your add the date there as well if you want to. So now all we're focusing on is the bottom of the screen. Don't worry about the top. We're only focusing on the bottom. And immediately what you can see is our footers that are presented to you. And because we're on the pro version, we actually have access to them. So what I'm going to do now is say, okay, well, which footer do I like the most? For, for now, I actually really like this one. I don't know why it's screaming at me, but it's screaming at me. So I like this footer. I'm going to view it. That's what it looks like, which is great. I'm going to insert it. And then what I'm going to do is once it's inserted, obviously I haven't set up my, my logo or anything like that. I'm not going to bother with that at this point in time. We're just going to set up the footer. And then what you're going to see is all the, all these things that are here. Now, what's really critical about building your first piece on WordPress and Elementor is cleaning it up and having a good foundation for WordPress and Elementor. What do I mean by that? So what you want to do is actually click on the top left and you're going to see site settings and theme builder. And then you want to go to global colors. Now you want your global colors to be the core colors that your website uses all the time. Now you can add and remove and do whatever. I'm just going to use a random color, but a lot of companies use like brand guidelines and all those things. Now there's a proper way to do colors and the way you do them in reality is you go onto a website like the Adobe color wheel, and then you just go in and extract all these colors and you figure out which ones you like. So in this case, these are going to pick colors that all work really well together. Now, here is what the theme looks like. Here is what it looks like again. I'm kind of liking that. I like how it's like not all the way there, but there. So I'm just going to keep that. And then what I'm going to do is actually add them. So I'm going to just put this on my second screen for now. And I'm going to add them here. So that's going to be my main color. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make this faster for you. And what I'm going to do is just extract two different colors. The first color is going to be this green and then the blue. And so I have blue and green as a base line. Now I want to do my text. I'm just going to keep it not completely black, but I think that should be more than enough. And then accent, don't worry about accent. You can add as many colors as you want. Then you want to update. The next thing you want to do is very important. So you want to add global fonts. And the reason you want to do this is because fonts slow down your website. So what you want to do is, you know, if Roboto, you like Roboto, use Roboto. I personally like Poppins because I think that looks awesome. So what I'm going to do and what's really cool about this is it's already sort of done for you as well. So if you click on Poppins, the rest, the weight and all that will be sort of there for you. You can go in and change that, but probably don't need to. You can see weight is 400 for that one. Weight is weight is 600 for that one. And we're just going to continue to add Poppins. Roboto looks okay as well, but I'm a Robotons fanboy. And then if everything goes to crap, it'll fall back into this one, which it never does. So you have nothing to worry about. So now you've just done your colors for the website and you've done your fonts. Now that's going to make things very consistent. And let me show you why. So because I've just added this footer here, you can see that if I go to style, so you go to footer, you click on that, literally, you go to style and you're going to see default. The reason is, is because if it wasn't on default, it would have done something like that. Um, the reason that's a really bad for your website and you're not going to get 90s, 90 plus because of it is because you're loading up different fonts. You never want to do that. And then I'm going to go back to every single one of these and make sure that it's on default. This needs to be on default. They all need to be on default. And that means that you're not loading any additional types of things, which is perfect. So in this case, I'm just going to copy what I have here as a little secret. If you press control shift and V, you'll be able to copy uh, without taking all the all the uh, attributes for that. So if I just press control V, that's what it looks like, right? Uh, but if I press control shift V, um, it brings in the theme as well that I'm using, which is quite fun. Here, I don't need most of these things. So I'm going to get rid of them. Oh, I'll keep my, I'll just throw my YouTube channel in there as well. I have my LinkedIn page as well, but whatever, that's fine. The way you do this is you can just literally edit them, right? So if you want to edit or add something, uh, let's say I wanted to add a LinkedIn profile. So all I do is click on that. Now it's giving you a whole library of, of um, logos as well. So all I've done is clicked on the plus button, click on LinkedIn, and then it's there like immediately. And then you just put your link there. Don't worry about any of that stuff. That's fine. If you want to change like to a square and all that stuff, it's not a, it's a non-issue. And then here is the other component. So let's say you want to just change that. You can add to that if you want to. That's fine. So in this case, what I want to do, I want to have services again, control shift V uh, after you do that, you want to have contact. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. And then what you want to do is click on that again, you go to content and then it's like, okay, what do I want in there? So 
if you remember, I sort of already laid it out before. So if I go here and I go to exit to dashboard, but don't click on exit to dashboard, just right click, go to open a new tab. And this is gonna inform me. There's a reason why I did it like this. So you, now you're gonna see I have about blog, build your website, contact. So contact is obviously uh, uh, contact us, right? Which is contact there. But the other ones are like, what are the other ones, right? So the other ones are build your website, uh, free audits. So I'm just gonna copy that and literally have them here. So. And then I'm gonna add one more. And there you have your services immediately. Now you can go in and change like that stuff if you want to, that's completely fine. Everything here is adaptable and you can change everything, which is cool. The next really cool thing that I wanna show you, and this is relatively new, is uh, you click on, just click on this in isolation. The reason you click on this in isolation is because now I'm technically highlighting everything as in the background of it. Header menu one, you can see the style. So if I wanna add padding to it and make it smaller, I can do that. And then what you wanna look at is something called the navigator. So this is gonna help you move things around if you want to. Once you've clicked on navigator, you're gonna see if I click that, the section, it's gonna highlight just the top section. There's actually two sections to this piece. There's the bottom section and the top section. So I'm gonna highlight the top section. And in this case, I wanna add a nice image. So of course I have the color here, which is the color of it, but I'm gonna revert, revert that back because I don't like that color. But then there's also the ability to add images. So I have like this image, for example, that I think looks pretty cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say no repeat, and then I'm gonna do cover. Or I could just do cover and it'll cover it. Now that's looking pretty cool to me. I think um, I can obviously change it around a bit if I want to. And now we're getting to like a really cool looking type of image, which I think is quite useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this footer and then we're gonna continue with the header after this. So I've gone ahead and I've updated everything that I wanted to update. I'll probably add some more things. You could visit the website if you want. It's just gonna be petridigital.com. You can even Google it and I'll be there. You'll see that I have services. I have contact, which is contact, my free sessions, my free audits, my YouTube audits and all that stuff, which is all fun and games. And then I have some cool stuff, which I think is just a, a cool placeholder name where I have my marketing mentorship as well as my YouTube education and the blog for the website itself. So like that's the marketing mentorship those uh, if you want to join that make sure you join our Facebook group it's quite powerful lots of people are in there already and uh, we're all talking about some cool stuff which is fun and games but I'm happy with this footer for now and I think it's a really good addition to the site so what I'm gonna do is actually press save draft and then what I'm gonna do is press uh, display conditions once you're in display conditions you just want to click add condition entire site and that's it you can add additional conditions like you can exclude it from specific websites Sites. And that's okay for like landing pages and things if you want to go down that route. However, this is completely fine for what we need now. And it's also live right now as a, as a result of that, which is perfect. Now that's templated. All I've done is just added the things from Elemental Pro. Now what I'm going to do is I want to change this stuff a bit and I want to make this make a bit more sense. So I'm going to add my logo. So how am I going to do that? So the good thing about Elemental is there's a lot of things already here that enables you to do all that stuff. So if I click on site settings, I can change my identity and all these things. So the site settings, I can actually add like what the site name is. I can add the site description. I can add all of these different things. So in this case, I'm gonna add the site logo. So where is my logo? Well, I know where it is. So there's Petri Digital as my little site logo, which I think is fun in games. Um, I can also resize that if I want to, but for now, I think that's fine. Um, also my Favicon. My favorite con is basically this little thing up here. So I'm just gonna grab that as well. Click on that. Now we're going to have my little favorite con, which you're gonna now see this top uh, WordPress is going to change accordingly. So you'll see update now and back to editor. And you'll see over time that'll eventually change. And as you can see, bang, it's already changed to PD. And now we have a site logo as well, which I think is pretty cool. Now I just wanna make sure that my site logo goes with that footer. So how do I go back to that footer menu? Let me go back to the dashboard. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to templates 
and then you want to go to all. Now it's really critical that you, you keep this very clean. The reason is, is again, it goes back to removing junk on your website. So now that we've created the footer and we also know it's across the entire site. And of course I'm the author, big deal, but I want to go back to Elementor just to make sure that it looks okay. I have a feeling it's not going to look okay, but Hey, that's the whole point. So now you can see Petri digital doesn't look that great there. This is what it looks like as a whole thing. And you can see the background image isn't syncing very well. So there's a few things I want to do to it. First, I want to change the size. That's the first thing you always want to do. If it's a smaller image, make sure to change the size of the image itself. So in this case, medium is more than enough. Otherwise it's actually going to produce a 1000 pixel image, which slows down your website. Again, always do this to your images. So I've gone ahead and noticed that the black color doesn't really mix too well with the Petri digital sign. So what I'm going to do is change it. So the way you change it is simply go into there and you can just do that. And then what I do is I click on, or I drop and drag my white version of the image. I allow that to go through and then bang. So then all I want to do then after that is just uh, style it in a way that makes it the same size. Of course, I want to reduce the size immediately. I want to center it or make it to the left. And then what should happen is, and I'm happy with that in isolation, to be fair with you. Do I want to change the color of that? You can do that pretty easily. All you need to do is go in, you click that, you go to style and you can change the icons or you can just change uh, whatever you really want, which is fine. Now, a quick tip, you need to make sure that there are actually the icons are showing. Now, in this case, I don't want them to show. So what am I going to do? I'm going to tell the system not to move them or not to show them in this case. So as you can see, I'm really cleaning it up. I don't want noise on this on this website. A lot of the time when you use these like templates, what's going to happen is it's going to bring some stuff to it. So you want to always make sure that you're removing all this nonsense. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then once that's done, it will pretty much be complete. I can save draft. Heck, I can even just update it. You see a green line up the top of the screen, which means it's uh, doing its thing. It's loading up. It's, it's doing it. Done. Now we've got to ensure the, the settings are good. Always make sure that they're good before you leave. And then that, my friends, is the footer in a nutshell. I'm really happy with that. Now it's time to work on the header menu. Now the header menu is almost exactly the same. Now all you need to do is go into templates, save templates, or you can go into theme builder as well. It doesn't really matter. Theme builder works as well. And then you literally just click header or you just press add new. Now what you will find if you select header menu and you just call that header one, create template. And of course it will show you all the header menus here. So it's probably going to give me one that is decent. Uh, personally, I'm not too fussed with the header menus. I like the look of this header menu in particular. I think it looks pretty decent. All I would have to do, of course, is change it around a bit. As you can see, there is the bottom section down there, which of course is the footer. And all I want to really do is copy the colors around. So in this case, uh, I think that's a bit weird um, to be fair with you. So what I'm going to do is just make that a bit thinner. So here's the header menu. Now, the way they've structured this particular header menu is they've created the header, of course, and then underneath that, they've divided two sections of the header menu into one inner section. You'll see that this is actually highlighted right now, the blue section, as well as the bottom section. Now, the way this is going to work is I know that I don't like this color up the top because I'd rather make it fit with this one. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and change that color to match the bottom so that's exactly exactly what that looks like. The other thing I want to do is because I like this this so much, I'm going to um, add that color to the uh, template, the color templates that we referred to earlier. So just so it's always saved. So that's like the background smiley face. And then I'm going to update that. So now that color in particular is always saved, even though it's from the menu, uh, it'll work for now which is fine. And then I'm going to go back here. I'm not going to obviously use this one. I'm going to use my logo, which is the blue one. And you also notice, and this is really important that you do this again, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm changing the image size immediately. But what you'll notice is when you do these templates, it'll pick up and install other pieces of or other images from the template. What you want to do immediately is not keep them here. 
So you can see now that it's here. You want to delete it immediately. You don't want nonsense on your website. I keep coming back to that. There's a reason why I'm getting 90 pluses. It's because I'm cleaning the website to an extent, right? And then all you do here is just change the that a bit. We don't have a header menu right now. We'll get to the menus uh, soon enough once the thing is done. And then here is a little pop up on the right. So here is, um, you know, this is obviously not my colors. So if I wanted to make this my color, all I need to really do is obviously I don't like that. So I'm just going to use my black text and then the background is going to be just that for now. Alternatively, I could just have it as that and have it as white text as well if I wanted to go down that route. And then I'll just change this, the hover. So the hover just means when you hover over it, it'll change to a different color. So if I want it to be like, let's just say I turn it uh, red. Um, it'll go black in this case because I just turned it black and let's say I want the text to go red, red and black. That could be a thing. Um, if you want to go down that route, you can go down that route. I think it should hover to one of the preset colors that I've already done. So I like that and probably just change to just a, a lighter blue just as an indicator is enough. And there you go. It just shows that. Yeah, you've clicked that. Also, as a side note, red generally is better than um, other colors. Another thing you can do is add an animation to it. So if you wanted to just do that, that's cool. If you wanted to grow, that could be a thing. There should be like a skew. That's fine. Generally speaking, you just don't want to put animations in there. Again, it will slow down the website. Another thing you can do as well is you can have a, a little border. So generally 25 is good. Uh, 20 is good. Um, so I'm just going to have a small border there. So it's around. But you know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it all straight because the whole website's looking very straight. So I'm going to keep it there, which I'm happy with. Also padding, you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever. Um, normally keep it on default. It's fine. After that, then of course you just want to go in and change like your numbers, your or remove things. So I'm just going to have like hello at petridigital.com. Um, that one's fine. You can have your thing. So Sydney Market Street One. Um, yeah, good luck there. And of course, they're your social button as well. I've noticed that there's a search function here. I don't actually need that there. So I'm going to completely remove the column. Um, again, it's all about cleaning things and getting it to what you like. I think that's a decent start. I can just expand that a bit. I don't have a header menu. So otherwise, that is a simple header menu right now. Now what I'm going to do, of course, is update. I'm going to press publish. And then of course, exactly the same as the footer, we're going to change it to uh, we're going to keep it on entire site. And there you go. So now we have a header that's sticky. It's always at the, the top of the page. And we also have a footer, which is looking pretty schmick. Now that we have the frame of the website and it's looking good, then the rest is really just whatever we want. What I really want here though, and this is just like a little addition to it, and it makes your site look a tiny bit more fancy as well, is if I click on the bottom section here, I want to just add a tiny shadow. As you can see, there's a tiny shadow there right now. And that's just a simple little change. That's fine. The next thing I want to do is I'm feeling like this top section is a bit heavy. So what I want to do is click on here in a section, and then I'm just going to remove the padding. I want it to be thin. I don't need it to be big. And as well as this, I don't think these need to be so far away. So that's simple enough for me. That's totally fine. I'll keep it at five. I like to keep it at decent numbers. The icon, I can change the icon as the hover over. So you can see that this icon hover, obviously I don't want that. So I probably just want it to go blue, which is perfect for me. Now it makes me think, okay, maybe I should just change that to a highlight over blue as well. So it should be to our, our actual blue. So you can now see there's sort of like a, a theme going on here, which is fine. Now that is that it's going to be updated, which is wonderful. And that's our header, by the way, is a pain. Now, if you want to look at it in different modes, like if you want to look at it in tablet mode, you can do that as well. If you want to look at it in um, phone mode, you can look at it as well. There are different ways you can you know, view this stuff. The other thing you can do really quickly is this is going to be hidden in the phone and this should be hidden as well. So I can go in and select, okay, what do I want hidden? And what don't I want hidden? So I don't want a lot of this, the top section to be actually visible at all, at all on the phone, to be fair with you. So I'm going to have responsive and I'm going to hide it from the mobile. So I'm only going to see the, that logo and the menu drop down, and that's it. Nothing more, which I think is very reasonable. And then for the larger site, it's going to look like that. So we've just optimized 
both the header for mobile as well as for desktop and it looks fine on tablet anyway. That's more than reasonable. So I've gone ahead and redesigned the footer. Now I've already shown you how to get to the footer menu, which is great. And what I decided to do here is add two CTAs or otherwise known as a call to action. Now I have two here, which is a free 30 minute strategy session and also a free website audit, which I'm happy to do as a Petro digital service. And if you want this template, um, you can just go into, well, I can just send it to you. So what, what I want you to do then is just go and follow the, the Facebook community below, then send me a DM directly as in who I am, my name, and then I will send you a this actual footer menu. And it's very easy for me to do, and I'll show you how to do it right now. All you need to do is go into save as template. I save it. I've already saved it, by the way. And then what you do is once you're here, you always see this when you're creating something new. You click on um, the folder, and then I'm going to give you this. It's I, I don't know what I'll call it. I'll call it footer or whatever. All I do is export it, and that's great, and that works. And then what you do is you click on this button on the top right. You'll see import template. You can then just drop and drag the file that I give you in there, and you can have this template, and you can change it. What I want to do now is introduce you to something called Envato Elements. Now, before I introduce you to, to Envato Elements and explore this package, I have a full review of Envato Elements on the top right of your screen and how you can use it for different purposes. I'm going to use it now for the purpose of building a website. Now, you don't have to use Envato Elements. You can just build the website using the pages Elemental Pro gives you. And like, it's as easy as click on the folder, look at the pages that you want, probably sort of as new because the new stuff is always cool. And then, yeah, you have an unlimited amount of things that you can leverage, right? So there's a lot there. In this case, I like to use Envato Elements because I think their, their templates are really good as well. So I'm gonna show you that. Now I have a link to Envato below. If you wanna grab it, that's great. I highly recommend that you probably just get the one month because get the one month, right? And then you don't need to get it for any more because you just get it, you install it onto your WordPress, you download what you want, your templates, and then if you don't need it or use it anymore, don't use it anymore, right? So yeah, grab it for like one month or however long you want. Use it for one month. If you still like it, of course, use it, but get it for one month and then, yeah, and then you don't need to activate it. So I've gone ahead and installed it. All I had to do was go to add new, type in Envato Elements on the top right here. It could change slightly, you know, when you're watching this video, which is fine. And then you just want to um, install now, which, you know, which it's called Envato Elements. And then there you go. And then what you're gonna see is this under templates. Now, now what I'm gonna do is once you have an account here, you just connect it by logging in. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna see this license code here. This license code just means once you log in, it's gonna give you that token. You'll see the token generated up there. Obviously, I'm not gonna go up there because that means you're gonna see my token. So I'm gonna install the token regardless. So let's do this now. Now I've installed the token. You can see account created on the top right. So that means the person that's on this WordPress account will see this. Now, the first thing you wanna do once you have Envato Elements is you just wanna change your project name. I'm gonna call this project name Petri Ventures because I want all everything that I do here to be licensed to me. So I'm gonna just update that, which is fine. Oh, there's a few things with respect to the server limits that you can do as well, but you don't need to get to that. If you need some help on that, go to the community. But these, these server limits may change over time. If you have any questions on this, join our Facebook group and someone will answer that pretty quickly and show you a full video tutorial. I may actually create a video tutorial in case they end up changing these server limits, but otherwise it's not a big deal. Uh, and if you wanna just reset the plugin completely as though it's like brand new and you like deactivate your account, you can just press clear cache and uh, reset plugin, which is fine. Now, this is where I, this is where I love um, Envato Elements. There's two reasons why it's so powerful. The first one is, let's say I wanna create a blog, right? Now, what's gonna happen is, cause I've already, I've listed the title or the template template as Petri Ventures. Let's say this is a blog that I've just written for, or any media thing that I've just written, is if I go on here, and this is just the default, you know, some useful links to get you started. But let's say I wanna set up a featured image for my blog. What I can do is, generally speaking, these are the images that I have on the website. So this one I'm gonna delete. Also, just as a quick side note, delete images that you're not using. The default version of WordPress will only show you upload files, which is just drop and drag files and the upload limit is like 41 megs. You can change that to whatever you want. And then of course your media library. But now you can see here, there's something called Envato Elements. Now this unlocks everything for you. So now let's say we're doing a blog on cakes, right? I'm just gonna type in cake on the top left. And now you're gonna see all of these high quality images of cakes that you can use that are licensed to you immediately because you have an Envato Elements account. Now that means you don't have to go to Google and you have to go and you know look up commercial license and usage and all that stuff. You don't need to use Shutterstock 
You don't need to use anything like that. You literally just put anything like that. So cake, if I want to put in dog, for example, and you have like something to do with dogs, you can use all of this image, all these images. So I'm going to show you right now what that looks like. Like this dog looks amazing to me. Quick side note, if you like Brandon McMillan and you like dog training, there's going to be a link on the top right for that. He's an amazing trainer. Uh, and then I'm just going to import the photo. You're going to see Invito elements. That's going to all remove. That's going to remove while we put that in there. So success. And now if I look at this image and I go to edit image just to make it a bit bigger, you're going to see there's nothing there. There's no branding there, which is perfect. It's like we own that image now because of Invito elements. Now you can see why it's more powerful if you want to extend that deal. Again, I have a link to Envato Elements in the description below. It's as simple as install the plugin, log into the account, install the token, which it gives it to you, um, this token right there, as you can see, and then that's it, it's all done for you. Now, the second piece of that is we've, got, we've covered posts and images. Now I'm gonna show you the actual templates themselves. So let's do that right now. Now I want to create a home page for us using Envato Elements. Now all you need to do is click on pages. You can go to edit Elementor in two ways. You can click on that or you can go into edit, enable full width, of course, always, and then just click on edit with Elementor. And now you're going to see instead of just having these two, we're going to have Elementor here. So it integrates perfectly with the entire system. So now I'm going to go in and have a look and be like, okay, do I have any installed templates? No, I don't right now. And then I see premium kits, which is amazing, right? Uh, this is where th these kits are really, really good. You don't want to stick to the free kits. In my opinion, they're pretty basic. They're probably not optimized as much as you probably want them to be. But if you like them, go for it. You know, you can do whatever you want. So let's say you have, let's say you want to go to premium now. Now premium is really good because it has a lot of things. So what I'm doing now is going through all of the premium kits that I like. What I've done is type in agency. And this is showing me what all the agencies are doing. Now, Petra Digital is an agency at the end of the day. So what I've done is I've really liked it, it was this one, uh, Saku Business Agency. Now I've gone ahead and you'll notice that there's a difference. This one says install, this one says view. It's because I just clicked on install and you're going to see them in there. But um, I like this one as well. And the big thing that I liked about this, now I can go in and change the colors or whatever, but um, I like this vibrancy and everything. And I like how like friendly and inviting this is. But the biggest thing I liked from this one, and this is like, it made me say immediately, yes, I want this, was this area here. I think this FAQ section looks amazing. Um, and F having an FAQ section on your website, especially on your homepage, is a ping it to Google. It, it informs Google what you guys are all about. And it gives you a good, it gives them a good idea of, you know, what exactly are the solutions you're offering. So if I have a digital marketing agency, the first one would probably say, what is digital marketing? And then I explain exactly what it is. And then the next one would probably be something else and whatever within the context of what you're doing. So if you have like a travel business, you would say like, what exactly is business travel or something to that effect. But you get what I'm saying. I'm looking at different templates that I like and what I can pool because there's nothing stopping you. Like for example, this, I just love what they've done here. And I probably will install this template just because of this full screen video. I think this looks actually quite clever what they've done here. And the pop-up is functional as well. So that's great to me. I think this is really nice. So what I'm gonna do is actually download this one as well just for that piece. And that was called Travel X. So I'm gonna install that kit. It's in, so, and it installed correctly, which is perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is go and leverage each one of these together. Now, when you see these kits, you're gonna say I have three, and now I'm gonna use these three kits to build out my website. And if I see anything else that I need, and I think I need, then I'm gonna go and look at more premium kits and leverage other areas. It's just really important that you get your, your global fonts correct. So when I say that again, you go into site settings and you get these uh, design systems correct. Global colors, global fonts. And then, yeah, that's gonna make a lot more sense once we get there. So let's do that. So I've gone ahead and created the entire website out and now you can actually see it. It's live if you ever want to go and see that. It's called PetriDigital.com. But in saying that, let's show you what I've done and show you how I've actually built it. So of course, in order to edit it, we click on that. We click on the edit and then we click on edit with Elementor, which is pretty simple. So as you can see, um, I've actually used a, a few different tools in order to build this out. It's looking pretty smick. And if you actually want to copy this template, follow the, the link in the description, which says like Facebook group, join the Facebook group and then DM us and then we'll send you the file. Uh, and I've already shown you how to work with that. So all I have to do is uh, show you that which is fine. So this is the website that I ended up building out, which is pretty good. So yeah, all you would have to do is if you want to use my template, 
you can literally just, all you do is um, you click on this button, you click on my templates once you've uploaded it by pressing this, once you press that, and then you click on the one that you wanna use, um, which is the thing I would have sent to you, and then you can use it yourself. But let me just take you through how Envato Elements works really fast. So the way Envato Elements works is if we look at it from the perspective of, uh, we'll go from the left to the right. If I click on this little toggle on the bottom left, this is going to display what the entire page is. It's sort of like the overall page. Everything behind all of these sections represents what we've just clicked here. Now you can see that it's elemental full width. That's what we want it to be all the time. We can honestly change a few things in the background if we want to have a background image. So if I was to go ahead and click on that and do this, and I have a whole bunch of images here, which is all fun and games. So let's say I wanted to use like uh, this. It will apply this background to the entire image. And in order to fix that up, it's pretty simple. Um, all I have to do is leave the position as is, attach file, all I need to do is uh, fixed, uh, or I can actually leave it where it is. I can do repeat and say no repeat, and then have cover. So what's actually gonna happen is it's going to cover the entire page and hopefully we will see it. So in this case, we don't see it, oh, there we go. Because the page is so large, it's showing up there. But that's the background of the page. Obviously, I don't want to do that because uh, I think that's not really good for this specific page. But for some pages, it's okay. So that's the bottom left. The navigator is simply toggling, toggling the navigator. You can apply it there. You can make it small. It doesn't really matter. And all of these sections indicate a different section of the page. So the top section is obviously the top section, not the header. The header is a separate animal altogether, which we've already discussed. The second section is the second section, etc., etc., etc. Now, in order to edit each section, it's pretty simple to be fair with you. All you really need to do is understand the layers behind it. So there's obviously the, the top layer or the bottom layer in this case, which is the section. And then just similar to how the page works. So it's like the page and then the section and then what's on top of the section. So it's in this case, it's a column or two columns in this case. And I have complete freedom over these columns. I can like move it around and up and down. I can do whatever I want with that, which is fine. Another quick note that you can do is press control uh, C on your keyboard. If you want to like revert back what you just did, you notice that I didn't actually have to change anything and it did it. And you look at it from like a layer perspective. So every single type of layer has three options and you'll see them on the top left of your screen now. So you have the section, which gives you the layout, it gives you the style, and then it gives you the advanced. Generally speaking, advanced is going to apply a lot of CSS to your, um, your page and it's gonna slow it down. So I highly recommend that you try and avoid that as much as possible. You have the simple layout of the section, which is how high it is, the columns, and all of those things. Obviously you can change that based on what you like. And then you have the style. So what is the background image of that? Um, what is the, the overlay of that background image? So do I wanna add, let's say a random blue to it? Um, so now there's like a red theme, or if I wanna make it like this, like you can just change it and then you can adjust the the transparency of that as well. So that's a background of that. But always remember guys, if you wanna do this and you wanna uncheck, always uncheck, never have like this. If you don't want it there, it shouldn't be there. When I say that, I mean, this shouldn't ever be checked. Like you never wanna be in a situation when you do, when you do this and make it completely transparent. The reason that is, is because you slow down your site because it's loading that stuff up. Even though it doesn't look like anything, it's still loading. So you wanna make sure that that stuff isn't happening. Another thing is your border. So if you want it to have a border, if you want it to have like a border type. So if you wanna have a hover, there's a whole bunch of different things. If I wanna have a drop down shadow here, which I think actually looks pretty cool. So I may I may leave that drop shadow, um, which is just, you'll notice that. So I'll uncheck it, but now uh, you can see it there. I like drop shadow personally. I think it looks really cool. It makes it more vibrant and it comes out at you. And then of course typography, which you don't really need to worry about. I'm gonna go ahead and update that because I like the change I just made. And then we have the column layer. And again, it's exactly the same thing. So you have the layout, how it works relative to the section. So in this case, we have the top column, which is obviously just a bit bigger than this section. Uh, if I move that out of the way, you'll see that there's that section and that section or that column and that column. This column is taking up literally 60% of the screen and this column is obviously 40%. And then if we keep going down, the exact same things apply. We can, add, we can add a background image, we can add layers, but it only apply to that section that we've highlighted. And then you go a layer into that. So we have headings and icons and images within those layers. 
and they're really easy to, to edit. All you need to do is click on literally that, and then what you do is you drop and drag what you want within the section. And that's it, which is fine. And now if you want to copy them, all you have to do is press right click, copy, and then you can paste it wherever you want. Now, in order to move these sections around, you can do it two ways. You can move it like that, or you can move it by pressing this and you actually see the physical thing move. So that's that. The other thing that you can do is add a few more little cool animations to it. And that's what I did. So how did I do that? So I like these animations, even though they slightly slow down your site, it really gives a lot of life to your website. So in this case, you'll see an animation here for this specific image. In this case, all I did, I didn't have to click on the navigator. I just clicked on the image. So, and then it's automatically gonna to go to the navigator. And then what I did is I went to advanced and I told you it's gonna slow this down a bit. I went to motion effects and then vertical scroll what's happening is it's putting a vertical scroll. I can add a horizontal scroll and then it looks like that. Um, and then you can adjust that however you want. So I like vertical because it makes sense because the user's going up and down. This is not animation. This is just a different tile. So it's called image carousel. In order to find image carousel, for example, you just type in image carousel. And then there it all, oh, where is it? There it is, right there. So if you wanna add like one of those, you just do that. And then all you have to do is upload all the images that you have. So you have a lot of options here. So I've shown you the background on like the full page and what that looks like. I've shown you the layers on top of them, which is the navigator section columns. And you can go really deep with this. And it's the whole point, how you get good at Elementor is you just keep playing with it and keep building sites. So I built a whole bunch of sites with Elementor um, because I think it's fun. Yeah, and as you can see, I have like little animations going and that's just like one image. And that's that. So that's Elementor in a nutshell. And if you want this, by all means, you're welcome to join our community and follow our group. It's wonderful in there. And we'll send you these, uh, these files to upload onto your website. Now, what I want to do is show you how you can, how I actually got these ideas. So I showed you before how I was using Envato Elements, but now you'll see Envato Elements here. And what you'll notice is all I did was I clicked on view installed kit, or like, let's say I use this one. And then it's giving me the options to like every single different page that I would need. So I have the style kits, I have, um, subscribe forms, I have homepage contact forms. That's actually a very nice looking form to be honest. I have the homepage one, so you can go in and inspect that and see what that actually looks like, which looks really good by the way. And then all I did was insert template. Once you've inserted the template, the sky's the limit there, right? It's gonna import all of the, the core settings that you brought into this. What does that mean? It means all the site settings that you've done, all the colors, everything will be put into that. And if you want images, because you've invested in Envato Elements, all you need to do, so let's say I want to change this, you literally go into Envato Elements, which is a new thing, that's not standard WordPress, and then you click on whichever image you want. So if you want like pretty girl, you can add a pretty girl. And then there's probably a Christmas theme going on, which I'm digging, um, you know, and oh, there's a little baby, nice. Um, and then you can add those things. Um, and you have, of course, full rights to those things. The way I've structured this is pretty simple. So you probably would have noticed that uh, the, the foot is a bit different from before. I've added a few things. I've just, you know, I've connect and I have the company and what we offer. And that's that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I will pretty much answer everything. So there's going to be a link in the description which discusses how to set up your domain to Cloudways or how to set up your instance of like WordPress to Cloudways to your domain or otherwise known as getting the Petri Digital, the, the website name onto the server. So I'm gonna have a separate video for that that's built by Cloudways themselves because you, when it comes to those server things, you always wanna go directly to the source. And obviously Cloudways is the source in this case. So I'm gonna have a separate link for you there. Now what I wanna show you really quickly, and once you've done that, you've clicked on the link, you've gone to that uh, Cloudways website and you've understood how to Put your domain in now it's time to do a whole bunch of other things that are required so the first thing you want to be doing is going into once you're in settings go on to uh, reading and then you want to uncheck make sure this is unchecked search engine visibility this needs to be unchecked 
because it means if you have this checked, Google will not index your website. The next thing you want to do is set up your homepage. So you'll see a static homepage. I have a whole bunch of all, all, all of my other websites there or all of my pages there. What you want to do is set your homepage to homepage posts. You can leave it as is, it's fine. Now what you want to do is you want to install a few plugins. Now here are the plugins that I personally like to use. Again, you want to keep them very small because of the nature of how it works. The first plugin that I highly recommend you do and get is actually Elemental Contact Form DB. It means if anybody signs up to your website in any way, it will always go into that contact form, meaning you will never miss a lead. And all that does is it adds a little thing there. It's very light, trust me, get it. The next one I like to get is Header Footer Code Manager. What this is, is an easy way for you to install Facebook pixels, uh, LinkedIn pixels, anything that would require you to add something to your header or your body. So I'll show you how that works really quickly. So all you need to do is this is what it will come up, HFCM, header, footer, whatever. And then you add a snippet. And then if you need to add something to the head, you add to the head. If you need to add something to the body or the footer, you add it to the footer. That's all that is. The next plugin that I highly recommend you get, and this is once all your pages are complete, but you, they're not published yet, is Rank Math. Rank Math is a powerful tool that I highly recommend you look at. I have a link to Rank Math in the description below. Very powerful. Now, what does that mean? It means it's basically saying you can now communicate to Google what you're going to be offering. So let's have a look at one of the examples I've done. Now I haven't done all the other uh, sites on, in this case, but I have done one website and you'll see that this is rank math here, SEO details. SEO means search engine optimization. We talk about that in the group all the time. Point is I'm gonna show you one site that's been like SEO optimized if you will. What I'm doing is you will notice that a new option has come up here. So this is what traditional WordPress looks like. It's just the toggle, and then all the gear, and then it's just those things. But now you're gonna see an 84 out of 100. That's Rank Math. Rank Math is now informing Google what your page is about. So in this case, so in this case we do Dynamics Like, which is Microsoft's marketing. So what I've done here is, this is exactly what it looks like in Google, as though it was like on the first page of Google. And this is also what it looks like on social media. So if I was to post this specific page on social media, which is the dynamics page, you'll notice that bang, we will have a page that is read correctly by Google. And as you can see here, we have the title, which is, uh, you wanna keep that under 60 characters. And that's what the title is for us. You have the permalink, which you probably don't need to change, um, but sometimes you need to change it. And then of course the description, which you wanna keep under 160 characters and then bang. And then that's exactly what it looks like. So you're, you're really leveraging everything. And you, in a nutshell, you basically always wanna be above this green or this like orange -y yellow color. Uh, always be above that. If you're like here, it's fine. If you're here, even better. Well done. Now that's what rank math is. And then you apply it to all of the pages that you've built. Very powerful. A lot of people don't talk about this. Um, I will eventually do it on these sites when I want to do it. And this is a very lean website so far. And then the last one I like to do is or, or have is called short pixel. Now I've had to remove my API key. Otherwise you could literally just take it. But in saying that, what you want to do once you hit short pixel um, is you want, it's always defaulted to lossy. You don't actually want to do lossy. You want to either go glossy or lossless. The reason is, is because if you go down the lossy route, it's going to destroy the quality of your image to a point where it's all pixelated and it's ugly. So always stick with lossless or glossy. Even glossy to a certain extent is pretty bad. Lossless, it's going to optimize your images and make them really quick. So very, very critical. And that is the, the add-on phase. You really want to do that rank math once you've built out all the pages like I have, and that's what you see. So, so I'm going to go in and build all of that when I want to, which is great. Now there's just a few more things that you really want to set up now. You'll notice that, and this is really critical that you do this. And this is more on the server setting. So you notice that there's HTTPS and there's also HTTP. You always want your website to be HTTPS. The S means secure and Google doesn't like sites that are just HTTP. Fortunately, you need to do some things now. So let's go back into Cloudways and add a few things, mandatory things that you need to set up. And these are the last things you really need to do. Once it's done, you're pretty much off in the races and your website's functional. So once you're in the server application settings, you want to go and click in the website that you were looking at. So in this case, we have Petri Digital. And then what you want to do is go ahead and click on SSL certificate. All you need to do to set up an SSL certificate on your website with Cloudways is click on Let's Encrypt and then just add your personal email address. 
And that will be more than enough. And then add your domain name. So which is in my case, petrodigital.com. That'll be more than enough. That's the first thing and then save, give that a few minutes, it'll kick in, it'll auto renew as well. So you don't have to worry about it ever. And then the next thing you wanna do is go into the application settings. Once you're in application settings, what you wanna do is you'll see HTTP redirection. If this is disabled, enable it. This is going to make sure that every time somebody goes on to like www. Pet or HTTP and then petrodigital.com, it'll automatically redirect or otherwise known as convert to S every single time. Google loves that. And also on top of that, Google is only going to crawl the S as well. It won't crawl the HTTP because it thinks it's automatically part of the HTTPS. So that's the last thing you really wanna do. If you now wanna speed things up and make your website even faster than it already is, all you need to do is add a content delivery network, otherwise known as a CDN. By all means, if you wanna do that, that's completely fine. That's gonna um, speed up your website quite a bit, but you're probably not gonna need it for now. Definitely look at getting a CDN once you scale your growth, once you scale the traffic, and that's really it. And that's everything that you really need to know in order to build a website. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you, if I missed anything major, let me know, uh, and I'll continue to make content in order to push that out. If I did miss something and you did tell me, I will have a link to that in the description because ultimately I will fix that. Otherwise, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Check it out, Cloudways, Elementor, a whole bunch of different sites for a really cheap price compared to Shopify and all those Wix and Squarespace. Once you learn how to do this, you also become an extremely valuable asset to companies as well. So it's a career booster, it's a life booster, and it obviously saves you money in the long run, especially when you have multiple sites like me. Give this video a like, subscribe if you want to. There will be a lot more content. Join the community. And that's really it. Creator Lewis, out.